Don Bosco, as we famously know him, was and is an Italian saint in the Catholic Church. Called his real names are, or is, John Bosco. John Bosco. That was his birth name. Because that Don basically means father in Italian. So Father Bosco. And it is interesting to know that actually that word Bosco means woods, like forest. Eh? So Don Bosco is a saint in the Catholic Church. He is from Italy, born on 16th of August, 1815. And he died on 31st of January, 1888. In the Universal Church, Don Bosco is known uh, under the title of Father, Teacher, and Friend of Youth. And that is in the, in the Universal Church. Now, Don Bosco grew up in a very difficult family environment because his dad died when he was hardly two years old. And he was brought up by his, his, a single mom, Mama Margaret Okiena. And it is also good to know that he had two other brothers. Joseph was his brother, Anthony was his stepbrother from his father's first wife. And also we are told Don Bosco had the little sister who died when she was also very, very, very young. Growing up was not very easy because the young mother had to do a lot of things really, to go out of her way to take care of them and all the needs, you know, family needs and all that. And Anthony was a very hardworking person, but a very bitter person, very rough person. And that way Don Bosco never had any easy time at home. Don Bosco had the desire to, you know, read and become a priest. And that's another old story. We have the dream at the shrine there, at the, the backdrop of the, the altar there, the dream at nine. But what is important to know is that Anthony would often rough him up, even burn his books and want him to go to the fields and, and till the land and farm and, you know, produce some food. And at, at one point it was so much unbearable that uh, the imam had just to allow him to leave home, to go and look for uh, some place to stay and earn a bit of living. And that also gave him opportunity to learn so many things about life, to learn different skills and earn little money that he saved and would pay for his school fees. Things that he would later come to teach his boys. Eh? That is Don Bosco growing up, the literal John Bosco growing up. Of course, God brought along his path uh, some angels would say to help him. One was Don Caloso, who had started mentoring him already at a very young age, but unfortunately he died uh, before he could do so much to him. And yeah, that way Don Bosco became a priest in 1841. And at that time, he wasn't sure now what to do because those days the conception of priesthood was, was rather different. A priest would even become a tutor of, you know, kids from elite families and make a lot of money. At one point, Don Bosco also wanted to be a Franciscan. He wasn't very sure, but through the spiritual guidance of uh, one father, Cafaso, uh, who would also give him opportunities to go to the, to, to the street, to the prisons, to meet poor young people. Don Bosco would later on come to understand what God wanted of him, to take care of poor youth, you know, poor boys. And because already he had had a very difficult time growing up, he was in a, in a very privileged position, I would say, to understand, to get into their reality and understand their lives. And that is how on Sundays he would go out, gather them together and, you know, teach them uh, catechism and religion, have them play, give them bread and things of that sort, which, which would now become what we call oratory. And this is concept Don Bosco had borrowed from uh, one saint called Saint Philip Neri, who, who came up with this concept of the oratory, which basically means an house of prayer. 
because Saint Philip Neri would gather people together and preach to them and, and, and pray together with them as a way of evangelization. Now, um, we we hear of Salesians of Don Bosco. Where does that name Salesians come from? When Don Bosco began these oratories, he took St. Francis de Sales as the patron of his work. And that explains why officially in the church, the Salesians of Don Bosco are known as the Society of St. Francis de Sales. And St. Francis de Sales is, is a big, big saint. He, has a, he has, a, has a big name as a doctor of the church. And he is also known as the saint of kindness and gentleness. And he is famous for his spirituality, how he taught people how to relate to God through simple things of life. In fact, Don Bosco would learn from him to pray in the morning, to pray in the afternoon, in the evening, but also examination of conscience in the evening, things that he would actually propose to his boys. But also what is uh, important to note about St. Francis de Sales is that he promoted virtue, Christian virtue, you know, kindness, love, these simple things of life which sometimes we take uh, for granted. And that is what Don Bosco wanted his boys to learn, you know, to emulate from him. Uh, so Salatians comes from that last part of the name, the sales, eh? sales, Salatians. And we see of Don Bosco because there are so many congregations which have been inspired by his, his spirituality. So it's not only Don Bosco himself. Now, we can say many things actually the whole day about Don Bosco because sometimes you don't know what to pick, what to drop. Probably I would invite Wambogo to ask some question yes. about Don Bosco so that then we, yes. we are able to capture those things. Yeah. So, so my question to you, Father, is now that uh, Don Bosco is out there, he's become a priest, he's uh, uh, opened a, uh, an oratory, in fact, not just one, a couple of them. How does that now come to relate to the youth on the work that uh, Salacious of Don Bosco do for the youth today? and hence building up to the Marian uh, Spiritual Center that we are trying to contribute to. Wow, that's a good one. So the youth were so central in the life of Don Bosco. As I have said, he considered himself as one who is sent to God to minister to the youth. Not just youth, but those who are, you know, the poorest. And poverty is relative here. Poverty can take so many forms, eh? material poverty, spiritual poverty, and, and, and all that. Now, um, in doing that, Don Bosco also realized he, he couldn't manage to reach out to so many young people because he is limited as a person. And therefore, already at that early, uh, early times, he started uh, putting around himself uh, groups of Actually, some were his own, his own boys who had grown up and orienting them towards that. Now, history tells us that many of them actually proposed to him, you know, Don Bosco, we want to be part of what you do. We want to take vows. We want to belong to, to you and continue with this, with this uh, spirituality. And therefore, eventually he would begin a congregation, the, 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 what I call now the Society of St. Francis de Sales. Uh, some became priests and some became brothers. And uh, let me just say that um, it is important for us to note that Salatians of Don Bosco uh, include both priests and brothers. We call them coadjutor brothers. And I think many times we forget that element of a brother, probably because we are so much used to, to priests. And actually we are promoting also for that brother vocation that you can come be a Salatian and be a brother, not just a priest. Uh, so many of his boys, you know, became priests and, and brothers and that's how he would send now some like uh, Don Caliero to, to mission lands to go and spread the charism both abroad but also in, in Italy itself. And that is why we, we even have a missionaries here in Kenya and other parts of the world because 
It began as a dream which grew into a reality and a reality which has spread and touched lives of so, so, so many young people across the globe. So now, MSSC, as, 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 as you have asked, therefore becomes part of Don Bosco's mission, Don Bosco's charism. Um, if time allows, we can as well say that Don Bosco had a spirituality. A spirituality is what we call one's way of relating to God, one's way of living a, a spiritual life. We can also call it life in spirit, you know, how one encounters God daily. We have personal spiritualities, we can also have group spiritualities, we can have family spiritualities. For example, you can have a manner in which you as a family praise and, and relate to God, maybe retreat, fasting and, and stuff. Now, Salesian spirituality. Um, Don Bosco thought and would say that we can't separate spirituality from mission as a Salesian. And we have said that mission is to take care of the young people who are poor, you know, the poorest. Therefore, Taking care of youth, going out there and meeting the young people in itself is a spirituality. We encounter God through the young people. Therefore, in other words, we can as well say, young people are a place where a Salesian encounters God. And that's why Don Bosco also would come up with this personal mission. You know, if you go to this shrine of Mary Help of Christians, there is the relic of Don Bosco. The only place in Africa, one of the few places in the world to have such a relic. And we need to brag about it. We need to be happy about it. It is written there in that uh, glass case down there, Damihi Animas. The fuller form is Damihi Animas Chetratole. Latin for give me souls, take away the rest. This was Don Bosco's own mission. That at the center of his life is salvation of youth. You know, souls, what is at stake here is salvation of young people. And he would tell them many times, he would remind his, his young people who included Dominic Savio, Mickey Magoni and the rest that I want you to be happy both in this life and in the next. So salvation, eh, heaven, both here, be happy here now and even in, in, the, in heaven. And, and that also explains, um, again, what we call Salesian youth spirituality. Joy is very central. Don Bosco says holiness and happiness go together. And there is no room for, 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 for being dull, you know, for being sad. You would tell the young people many times. So our own is a Paschal spirituality, you know, flowing from the resurrection of our Lord. And Jesus has risen, so it means all the rest has been conquered, including death and, and happiness and happiness, uh, troubles of life and everything. Now, at the heart of the Salesian spirituality is what we call pastoral charity. And this is a very a technical word to understand in order to appreciate the spirituality of Don Bosco. The driving force of whatever the Salesians do, whatever Don Bosco did, was charity. And charity basically means love. This love is qualified, that word pastoral gives it the whole new meaning because anybody can do charity. But here is doing charity in the name of one's faith. You get? As if to say, you know, my charity, what I'm doing is a participation in God's activity of saving human being, and in this case, saving the youth. So pastoral charity, that is what drives the salutations of Don Bosco. That is what drove Don Bosco. Because he believed, and we believe that what we do, actually it is part and parcel of God's mission to save the souls of youth, young people. In other words, I want to, you know, look for my own salvation by necessitating salvation of the young people. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that way we would now come up with what we call preventive system. 
preventive system of education as opposed to repre repressive system of education. And it is a, a way of now leaving that pastoral charity. Yeah? That is a whole other topic, a long topic, but just in brief, preventive system has three pillars. Eh? One is reason, you know. Reason means you appeal as a solution or as a formator or as an educator, even as a parent, you appeal to the reason of youth or the young people or children. It's not enough to tell a young person, don't go out or don't do this. You have to reason with them. Why am I telling you not to do this? Or why am I telling you to do one, two, three? You know, you give them the, the reasons why, why you want them to do what you want to do them, you want them to do or why you don't want them to do whatever you don't want them to do. So now it is a way of persuasion. Eh? You make them to own up uh, their lives and what it is that you want them to do. So reason, you appeal to their reason, you reason with them. Second point is religion. Religion. And dear Don Bosco meant that we teach the youth to fear God. You know, fear of God. And formation of conscience. Yeah? Now, it is good to understand that Salvation charism cuts across all religions. Eh? Because if you teach one to fear God, that means whatever you call is God. If it is Allah, then fear God. And you know, like. Now, behind this uh, element of religion is the fact that wanted this, is young people, youth rather, to always have at the, at the back of their mind. Uh, awareness of God's presence in their lives and around them. Eh? Let's go back to his early days at home. This was cultivated by his, his, his mother, Mama Margaret, who taught them to pray the Angelos three times in a day, but who many times always told them, God sees you. You know, you, Mama Margaret would tell the kids, eh? God sees you, you know. God loves you. God cares for you, and therefore they had that perpetual awareness of God's presence in their lives. So, the first pillar of preventive system is, we say it is reason, the second is religion. Now, the third one is a loving kindness. Uh -huh. And here, in fact, again, you know it is connected with charity because we have said a pastoral charity basically means love. And love is very, very central to the charism of, of Don Bosco and the spiritualists. Don Bosco would say, therefore, the young people should be loved, yes, but they should also know that they are loved. And that makes the difference. For example, as a parent, you love your children very much. And you go out of your way to do, to sacrifice a lot of your time and energy because you love them. But the question is, do they know that you love them? Probably they don't know and they don't appreciate that. So if they come to know that actually you love them, that now softens their hearts. You understand? Now even Don Bosco would say actually education is the master of the heart. We educate the heart. Yeah? So those are the three pillars of the preventive system. But... By and large, it is lived in a family spirit. In a family spirit. Um, a family spirit means uh, that an educator, a Salesian, also should be present uh, with, you know, the, the youth. Not as a policeman or not as one who is watching them making mistakes, but one who is a friend and one who is a guide, one who is a father, who is a, who is a teacher. What that does is that it creates a spirit of familiarity so that the kids also now are free to express themselves and to seek for help, you know. Uh, the other element of, of that actually presence is that Don Bosco believed if an educator, be it a teacher or a priest or even a parent, is present where the young people are, that already prevents so many things from happening.
they'll not fall into sin and they will be happy. So if the, the young people are going for picnics, be as an educator, as a priest, be there also. If they are dancing, they are having some light moment, be there also. And that is enough to prevent any occasions of sin. Uh, we can say many things now, but uh, I don't want to drift away from your question. <laughs> no, 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 that you you fully answered it because uh, what what we are targeting is uh, the theme of MSSC where we want to dedicate or continue with Don Bosco's legacy yes. of uh, basically providing a home, a church, uh, a playground and a school. Now, for our you have rightly said that for MSSC to be salvation in nature, the youth have to be very central to that particular center we are talking about. Of course, it is not limited to young people. Any person, you know, old or kids, they can come and, and grow spiritually. But then we have to have priority for the young people. Now, in line with that, I would want to bring on board three attitudes, three attitudes of Salesian spirituality. Okay? One is priority for youth. And that's why I was saying MSSC, as part of Don Bosco's charism and mission, has to have in its center young people youth. So one attitude of uh, this Salesian spirituality or even the preventive system, is priority for young people. Eh? Yes. And I say it many times, especially those who are poor. The second attitude is confidence in young people. You have to have confidence in youth. Don Bosco would say, however bad a boy looks, there is a, a good thing in himself. And that is what has to be nurtured and cultivated. So confidence, uh, with, with with youth, or rather in youth. The third attitude is love. I'll give an example here. I think I was telling a group of, of, of some uh, volunteers the other day who work with Salesian sisters. In 1841, Don Bosco was going for, for mass in, in, in his nearby church, and there he found the sacristan beating one boy and chasing the boy away, you know, for no substantial reason. Eh? And because Don Bosco has this passion for youth and is love-driven, actually he confronted that uh, sacristan and, and told him, don't beat him, he is my friend. And mind you, it was the first time Don Bosco was seeing that boy. But you see now the attitude, he is my friend, you know. A few minutes later, Don Bosco would call that boy, who was Bartolomeo Garelli, and ask him a couple of quest questions, you know. Do you know how to pray? I don't know. Nobody taught me. Do you know how to read? I don't know how to read. You know, like everything he didn't know. Eh? And then Don Bosco asks him, do you know how to whistle? You know, like, <laughs> and he says, yes, that I know. And, you know, Don Bosco encouraged him and at least to show him that, you know, there is something good in you. And that way the boy opened up. He opened up to Don Bosco. So, but what is important there is the attitude of a, a formator, of an educator, of a salation. And we are told that is how Don Bosco began his mission for the first time, oratory, with teaching that, that Bartolomeo Garelli uh, Hail Mary. That's, that's how it began. And it has been history ever since, you know. So, yeah, young people, young people, youth. That's why we are challenging the youth. Look, this is your thing. Come, come and build your center. Yeah? Yes.